Hey everybody, Quint Lears with newhomesales.com. I'm with Basam Salem. Basam, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thanks, Quint. It's a pleasure to be here. So hey, listen, the Dos Equis guys, he's in trouble, man. His job's in jeopardy right now because I am now with one of the most interest, for sure the most interesting person in the home building industry. But Sam, how's this conference been so far? We're, we are at the Best Home Building Practices Summit up here with uh, Bob Schultz and, and, and Bob Witten. Uh, what's happening? How's the conference been? I think it's fantastic. I love the intimacy here. It's just it's a small conference, small venue. You can really talk to people. It's uh, it's fantastic. It's been great. So, uh, Bassam is doing. He is pioneering the use of artificial intelligence in the home building industry. How did that happen? You know, I think it would be uh, it would be hard not to hear about artificial intelligence these days. No matter your industry, no matter what function you do, artificial intelligence is is a really big theme these days. So uh, we are bringing artificial intelligence to home builders. We're making it so AI can be a tool to help in the home building process. So I, it's a controversial topic, right? I would say like um, salespeople, ladies and gentlemen, but Sam is going to replace you with a chat bot, right? <laughs> uh, I am uh, proud to say uh, for all of you uh, salespeople that if there is one function that likely won't be replaced anytime soon, it's selling. And it's selling because of all of the soft skills required to be an effective salesperson. So sales, while we can augment it, while we can take away the monotony, uh, you guys have maybe a decade or two. <laughs> Why do you hate salespeople, Basam? Exactly. It's, it's, you guys are just high maintenance, you know? It's a, no, so I, I really think that um, artificial intelligence is, is going to impact everybody. Everybody. Every industry, every vertical, uh, robotics, AI, automation in general. That is what is coming. Right, it's 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 impacting every every aspect of our lives, but um, I don't think we should fear it. I think it's something that we can harness and can become a tool that helps us take away things that we don't want to do in the first place. So naturally, over history, we're always afraid of what we don't know. We're always afraid of the next generation. I think that's why we're so afraid of AI. Uh, but I really think that you think about the convenience of talking to a home device. I won't name a specific brand, but you talk to a home device and order things, ask about the weather, what should you wear today, right? Um, these are things that an AI, you know, it, it's like having an assistant without without having an assistant. So I really think our, our lives are going to be better because of all this technology. Why specialize in the home building industry? What is it about home builders versus other industries that's caught your attention and that you see the need? You know, candidly, we are in a few other verticals, although home building is by far our, our, our top vertical. And uh, uh, it's because in home building, you're dealing with something very, very special. It's the largest home, uh, it's the largest purchase we all make. Sometimes once or twice, that's it, in our whole lives. So to impact and influence that process is really meaningful, both for the home buyer who is intimidated. It's, it's, a, it's a scary thing to go through. Um, it's a lengthy purchasing process. So the, the, if you can nail the home buyer experience, we, the home buyer experience as we all call it, um, you can do anything else. That is the most complex sale out there. It's, it's, it's a consumer sale that is very sophisticated, that is multi-step, that takes over a year potentially from first contact to someone moving in and needing help beyond that. So it's not just the selling process, it's the building process. And then post move in, there's the warranty process. So it's a really long experience for something really meaningful for, pe for people. So if we can bring AI to that and impact it, that's fantastic. Is it like, you know, there's problems with AI. Like, I, I'm on the advisory board for the Sales and Marketing Ideas magazine. And um, I was talking to the chair, Ann Ledwig, and she was like, yeah, I was talking about AI. We were talking about you and Atlas RTX and what you're doing. And she says, I had this chat box come up and says, hey, you know, we saw that you're interested in chairs. But she was talking about the SMC chair, mm. the chairman of the thing, not a chair, right? So the, the kinks have not been worked out. How do you overcome some of those embarrassing Profiles. If, if you're in, the, in an industry where um, you know people are real time and someone says, "Hey, you want a chair?" but they're talking about something different, or what, what's the thing that in the home building industry? What do you see? Uh, you know, it's it's actually worse than that because our chatbot speaks over a hundred languages, and oh, yeah. sometimes in speaking another language, it's not exactly perfect. But we think that the benefit way outweighs 
the minor hiccup from time to time. Okay. The fact that if I speak another language and I'm trying to buy a home, or if I'm speaking another language and I'm trying to engage a school district to help my children uh, uh, understand what my children are going through, which is another vertical, by the way, that we've been very effective in. Um, am I okay with a hiccup here and there, but I'm able to get what I want done? And I think the answer is typically yes, absolutely. As long as we're not talking about something life-threatening, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been really meaningful to, to have these kinds of things. You, something really interesting, I just, just thought of it just now, who knows that she's not like, oh, what a silly chatbot. Dang, that's a nice chair. You know what I mean? Like, right? No, absolutely. We, um, I, 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 won't, uh, I won't talk about any specific conversations, but there are some funny conversations that happen when people are talking to what they believe to be a machine. And, and it is. It's a, it's a computer system, essentially. Uh, just testing it, testing the bounds of what it knows and, and, and so on. Now, as you probably know, Quint, we actually espouse this notion. In fact, it's right behind us. Chatbots and humans better together. So part of our philosophy is we don't want to take the human out of the human experience. The human needs to still be there, but the human needs to do the aspects of the experience where the human is needed. So we believe in this, the human jumping in proactively at the right moments with some guidance from the bot. So it wouldn't help if the bot isn't guiding the human to say, hey, I might need help here. This person wants to go there and I don't know. Um, so we have this very seamless interplay between the human and the chatbot and we think that that's the right combination that's the right approach at least for the coming decade and, and to be clear we're talking about the, the website somebody gets on the website not like you walk into a model home and don't talk to a chatbot no absolutely so it's, it's so candidly it's across the whole experience if you come to if you come to a home builder website and you do a live chat um, you might be greeted by one of our chatbots and the chatbot can do some of the warm uh, uh, introduction and and qualifying questions with the with the uh, prospective home buyer and if it's 11:30 p.m. and there isn't an online sales counselor the chatbots at least there to answer some of the basic questions and it will always get asked one or two questions it doesn't know. But the great thing is it can say, hey, no problem. Tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m., our OSC will be here, and they will answer that question. But in the meantime, I can answer these four questions. Does the chatbot have a name? Do you, do you come up with a fake name for it? I'm just curious. Uh, you know, one of our best practices is that we've learned over the years of doing this is it's, it's good to self-identify as a chatbot, so we don't ever try to fake being a human. We are very transparent, and um, people like that authenticity. Uh, they like to know that when the human comes in, it's really clear that this is now a human, and now we're back to the chatbot, and, 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 and so on. Um, it depends on, now back to your original question, do you brand it? Do you give it an identity? And that's really up to the marketing department. Some folks like to have a little image, an icon of it, and, and make it a persona. Uh, others prefer to be more formal, and it's just, hey, I'm... I'm you know, it's, it's, a, it's just a textual and formal uh, representation. I don't know if you've heard this, but there was a, a chess competition, and they had the, one of the world-class grandmasters versus um, an actual computer. And then in between was like just an average Joe who knew the rules of chess, supplemented with a computer. Um, and you know who beat them all was the, the average guy with a computer. Yeah. Interesting. You know, actually, uh, so I, I'm a computer scientist by training, and I love this kind of stuff. One of the crazy things that's happened in the last, uh, I'm guessing it's five, five years or so, is an artificial intelligence program learned the rules of chess on its own by watching games of chess and was able to beat a program that had been trained uh, you know, trained manually. 20 years ago. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So the fact that we can now have artificial intelligence that can learn the rules, that is really fantastic to me. The fact that we could potentially then say, um, have a stick a program monitoring a human and the human's best practices and having it figure out what is the human saying when a home buyer tends to buy versus what is a human saying when they don't buy? Uh, what mannerisms do they have on their face? Um, do you see where I'm going? It's, yeah, it's the concept of identifying those patterns that work. So we no longer have to train these computers, and we're not quite there yet, but over the coming decade or two, that is where we're going. Computers literally figuring out these best practices on their own. What about the ethics of it, right? I mean, like Target got into trouble because, you know, somebody was searching for this. They started sending magazines on personal issues, health issues, and stuff like that. I mean, uh, I know we can't go into the whole ethics, but what, what is your take? 
Uh, my take is uh, technology will tend to bring that about everywhere. I mean, I think we, we uh, I think uh, the, the topic of robotics and ethics there is probably even more meaningful, candidly. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you, do you just, do we ever get to the point where you can't tell that someone's a human or not and, 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 and so on? Uh, I think that humans evolve, society evolves, uh, norms evolve, and what seems awkward and scary now becomes normal over time and what seems like an ethical issue now becomes less and less so over time as it becomes uh, less taboo and less vi vanguard and just becomes more acceptable. Mind you, I'm not saying that we don't need to, to take these things slowly, uh, but but I, I think if, if uh, history has shown us something, it's that we figure stuff out and we we evolve and yeah. it works out in the end. So I'm pretty optimistic about, uh, about all this technology. No, that is, it, it's fascinating to me. When I went, in the beginning of the interview, I, I, I said that um, Bassam is the most interesting person in the home building industry. That was not just a throwaway statement. So you're, he's a, uh, a, nin, a ninja. Oh, no, a ballet. You're in ballet, but you're a, nin, you're a black belt. I've been for a long time, but I married a ballerina. So ballerina. Okay. <laughs> I married one. Yeah. Um, you're from Egypt, you know, several different languages. You, you've got how many degrees? Uh, because I, I was a foreign student when I came here, I have four degrees: three in computer science and an MBA. Yeah, and and all your also your um, you're making an impact personally, you know, through keynote speaking. You have a TEDx talk that's out there. Thank you, thank you. Now I I, uh, I feel so very fortunate to have come to this country and to have had uh, the opportunities I've had here, and uh, it's uh, it's meaningful to me to feel like I can even touch just a few folks and help a few folks like me who uh, I think so few in the US appreciate uh, the opportunities we have here. And, and I think if we appreciated it more, we would realize how many people are trying to get the lives that we have here and, and uh, would do anything to, uh, to be in our shoes. So I think the, uh, th that sense of good fortune, I feel lucky. I feel uh, I feel uh, uh, it could have been much, much tougher for me. With all the problems I have, with all the challenges I have in my life, it could have been much worse. So, You've got an interesting background growing up um, you know, with your school. He used to have long hair. Now you have short hair. You, you, you're an interesting guy. So Just like I asked TJ, does, does my hair look okay? TJ, is it okay? Yeah, it there are a couple good. of tufts then, up here. And he got the memo, we're supposed to wear dark blue, yeah, but no, then you have to be different. Clothes. You had to throw it up. And, and the brown belts and everything, but look at your hair. If I had hair like that, I yeah, would wear dude, it too. I'm not a ninja. I mean, <laughs> so um, I, we were just talking a little bit before the interview, just interesting stuff. Like you, 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 in one of your TEDx talks or one of your talks you were doing, um, you were talking about like we're always on the wrong side of issues. Humans are. It, just for fun, let's talk about that. You know, one of one of my philosophies is it's interesting how we we tend to bifurcate society into liberals and conservatives, or green and blue, or Democrat and Republican, whatever our labels are. When strangely enough, we all tend to get to the same point, just separated by some time. So you know, one of my comments is today's conservative would have likely been deemed quite liberal 50 years ago just like today's liberal, will likely be pretty conservative in 50 years. Um, this, this notion of, of we're so different is, is, is sort of artificial. Um, now I go back to the point you just uh, you alluded to, which is my belief that if there's something history teaches us, it's that we are constantly wrong and that we constantly believe we're right at the time. Uh, you know, the simplest example, which is shameful, uh, is is our history with slavery, our history with women's suffrage. Right? These are not. We're not talking thousands of years. We're talking barely a hundred for women, and not much longer than that for slavery. And there are many, many worse issues. And at the time, today it's obvious. No matter what, what you could be conservative or liberal, uh, everyone by and large sees slavery as something fundamentally wrong. At the time, it was acceptable. The question then is what things do we believe in today that we will not in a hundred years and that will be deemed shameful in a hundred years or five hundred years and and can we can we start moving towards them now instead of quibbling over uh, conservative versus liberal what things are fundamentally are fundamentally uh, true you know that's beautiful um, why is it important to 
just to be different to, because it seems like as a kid, you know, okay, well, if you're doing that, I'm going to do this. If you're doing that, I mean, where, where does that come from? Uh, you know, I, I, I blame my parents. My parents both separately were contrarians. They always, they never liked to fit in. They never liked to be like everyone else. They always wanted to stand out, and, and they have drilled that into me. Um, if everyone else is wearing black, you should wear white. So the fact that you and I look the same right now it's is bothering really me. bothering me. It's... <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, well, you know, at least at least I've got the bald, and I, I pulled this up. I'm trying, right? but uh, but um, so it's 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 that notion. I think uh, you, you mentioned the Mark Twain quote, which I love, which is, if you ever find yourself in the majority, it's a good time to stop and reflect, because again, if everyone believes it. Um, maybe, maybe, just maybe, it's one of those societal things that society is wrong about. So stop and think about it. I always ask, like, the motivate the trainers. I say, who motivates the motivator, right? Because they're motivating people, but I don't want to know who motivates them. So you're the, you're the learner. You're the innovator. So who innovates the innovator? Who, who is influencing your life where you're, you're following them? I'm uh, not copying, but I'm saying, like, you're saying, oh, this is a person that I think it has had impact and continues to. Or where, where are you getting your knowledge from? Or are you, are you inventive? No, no, no. I, I, I think uh, I'm a, you know, I'm Egyptian. Um, uh, it's a 4,000, 5,000 year old civilization and I'm certain that it borrowed a lot of its intellect from uh, uh, other uh, civilizations just like the, I believe the Greeks borrowed from the Egyptians and the Romans borrowed from the Greeks. Uh, we all learn from one another. Um, but I think I learned societally. I, I, I love the fact that we now have technology, the internet, which didn't exist just 25 years ago, um, where great ideas can, can come up anywhere from anyone. It doesn't need to be a famous person. So I can't tell you how many times I read a quote uh, or a meaningful blog from someone no one's ever heard of that just has something really profound and it touches, touches me mentally and emotionally. And what I love is taking combinations of, of epiphanies and sort of gelling them together and, and coming up with a new, uh, a new outcome. So uh, we, one of the benefits of being a technologist who's applying this to, uh, applying technology to home building is they're totally different worlds. Uh, you know, you, the home building ecosystem is pretty closed. Um, in a lot of ways, uh, tech is pretty closed. It's really awesome to sort of cross to cross disciplines, to cross philosophy and technology and selling and, and, and so on. Uh, so I really, really enjoy uh, interdisciplinary uh, concepts. It reminds me of when the, when the internet was first coming out, a bunch of the phone executives came uh, and actually were like, well, show us this internet thing. And the guy was trying to log on and it was fuzzing out and they all kind of like smiled and looked at each other. And I think it's a little bit of that now. Like we have a chat box that makes something silly and we're like, ha ha, see, this will never be a thing. But you're saying it's going to be a thing. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the notion of, and I hate to get a little techie for a second, but uh, trust me on this, conversational user interfaces that phrase is going to be the future uh, for the next 10 years. Uh, so instead, if you remember GUI, do you remember that acronym, graphical user interfaces? Uh, you know, some of us who are older remember when that was a big deal, when the first version of Windows and the Mac came out, GUIs were a big deal. So graphical user interfaces being an interface where you click on buttons and pull downs and text fields, we are now at, in the dawn of conversational user interfaces. The concept of, I, uh, the concept being, I want to speak, I want to message, I don't want to have to deal with buttons and switches. I just want to ask for what I want. I want to tell an assistant, uh, can you please order a, an assistant being a virtual assistant? Uh, I'd like to order a pizza and have the assistant say, what size would you like? Uh, medium with cheese. Great. Uh, would you like tomato sauce? Yeah, great. That is a conversational user interface. I just got what I wanted done. Five years ago, I would have pulled a few menus and selected a few options, right? We are really getting to the point where everything we want and inter our interface with technology is going to be conversational. And I'm so excited that we're, we're a part of that solution. We're part of that process. Does it change? Off topic, and I know you've got, you're speaking and different things, but with domain names, a lot of people, builders are investing, you know, millions of dollars. Uh, Great.com just sold for $900,000. Um, so are the domainers, are they in trouble because, you know, you're just going to be like, hey, search great, you know, but it doesn't have to have that actual address. Is it, is it fundamentally going to change the Internet or is it just the way we interact with the Internet? 
do URLs still matter? Yeah, I wish I were smart enough to answer that. So I'll, I'll answer it generally. And that is, um, uh, again, history teaches us that every generation or so, we get technological generation or so, we get uh, uh, everything old becomes useless and you start all over again. So at some point, domains become irrelevant, certainly for the current and foreseeable future. Uh, domain names are pretty relevant because a lot of traffic still comes uh, organically through typed and and through direct you know direct URL so uh, I think it's relevant for now um, down the road absolutely everything changes because down uh, you know great current example even more relevant I think than than domains is mobile apps I, I I say three to five years ago everyone was building a mobile app or had a cousin who was building a mobile app or wanted to raise money to build a mobile app right everybody was building mobile apps today no one's downloading mobile apps unless you have Fortnite as your uh, mobile game that you're selling to kids. Hey, TJ knows what I'm talking about. Uh, my gosh, I can't get my kids off of Fortnite, and I need to learn it because I, I, I need to learn to play it. Um, but um, uh, it's very hard to get people to download mobile apps. In, in the matter of years, 07, the iPhone comes out. Five years later, everyone's building a mobile app. Five or six years later, no one's downloading them anymore. So it was such a short cycle, right? I don't think... The, the domain name, DNS as they call it in the internet, is quite that short-lived. Obviously, it's been around for a lot longer. But at some point, um, you will no longer need to write that. At some point, you don't need to download a mobile app. You can just talk to your mobile device. And the mobile device either has that capability or not. And if it has that capability, it engages you back. And, it, and talking can be textually or orally, right? And, and and um, I really see that as the as the future, and and uh, maybe it is on an on an Apple Watch. Maybe it, I shouldn't have uh, mentioned the brand, but you get the gist. Um, maybe it is on a device that's on our wrist, maybe a little bigger. Who knows? Uh, but uh, but the point is, we will we will converse with our technology. We won't be pushing buttons. Okay, and this is such a new field. What do we not know that we don't know? And what would you add to our audience that's watching that this is this is all confusing to me? This is, I mean, summarize it, and then also how do we connect with you? Um, so, I, I think what blows me away, Quint, is how many people say, "I've always done it this way, and I'm good." It's crazy to me. Um, given all of the change that's happening, technologically and otherwise, that we're not looking at what's happening. And the easiest thing to do is, if you're in an industry that tends to be a little lagging, and I'm not going to name names, <laughs> um, look at industries that are progressive and see what's happening there. And that is your future in five to ten years. And if you're not preparing now, uh, you know, it's, you're, you're going to be a laggard, you're going to be left behind. Um, it's, I think there's a lot that the home building industry and a number of other industries uh, need to learn from a bit more progressive, a bit more agile industries. So if you're watching, I want you to leave some comments, ask questions to Basam. You'll, you'll answer them. We'll connect. I'd be more than happy to. We're gonna get, we got to try to get you on the, in the magazine to talk about, defend your position with chatbots being uh, silly <laughs> about talking about a chair when it's talking about that. Um, any last word? Any, any, anybody on your team, any shout-outs you want to give? Anybody that's been a mentor to you that you want to give a shout-out to? I, I will shout-out to my whole team. I cannot, I cannot do what I do if it weren't for the folks that you've met here and the folks behind the scenes. I, 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 uh, if there's something I'm most proud of with respect to Atlas RTX, it's the team. It's the team I have built. Uh, it's the team who backs me and our clients. I'm, I'm sincerely the, so very proud of them. Don't forget the chatbot. Uh, you know, the, the chatbot doesn't have uh, doesn't get its feelings hurt, so I'm I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's, we don't normally do interviews as long, but I'm it, you know when I'm with the most interesting person in the home building industry. By the way, you met your wife when you were how old? Oh my gosh, I uh, I didn't know you knew that. That's pretty good. How do you you you? Uh, I I was I'm two years older than she is. Uh, I've known her since she was 14, and uh, I'm a little older than that now. <laughs> Well, this is a pleasure. You're still in great shape. You're still doing karate. Uh, no more karate because I did something to my knee thanks to that. But uh, now I, I just uh, it's been almost a decade of CrossFit, and that's that's good for now. Well, we're with uh, Basam with Atlas RTX. How do we contact you? Um, you can go to our website atlasrtx.com, um, and I'm on all the social media platforms under my full name. And then. 
you, we're going to start seeing builders using this. Absolutely. We have, uh, we're now uh, already uh, in over 300 communities across the country uh, deployed and uh, on quite a few websites as well. Awesome. Hey, pleasure to meet you. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you.